This week is Parsha's Truma. It's part of a long narrative portion in the Torah uh, that's in fact very short in time. Uh, starts basically from the exodus from Egypt uh, when the uh, B'nai Israel received the command uh, for the uh, first Pesach Seder concludes after the uh, dedication of the Mishkan um, in Bahalosaka in uh, the book of Bamibar, includes uh, all of uh, Vayikra. Um, and it's, the period is not, it's probably not more than a year and a half Okay, the word truma commonly means uh, charity. And what is being asked for is charity to build the uh, temple. Uh, the word also is, uh, the root is ram, which means to elevate or to be lofty or exalted, to exalt. Um, the idea is that the donations that are being made to the temple are being elevated. They were something that was in the physical world, and now they have become imbued with sanctity. Um, the I, when you're talking from the biblical perspective, um, you were still talking about a, what amounted to a barter economy. You did have money going back to the days of Abraham, but. Um, what is being donated is gold and silver, precious metals, among other things, 15 things enumerated in the Chumash. Uh, then you have things that are um, expensive and valuable, like uh, dyes and uh, spices to make incense, to make uh, incense. Um, Dyes in ancient time were very expensive. Um, color blue, Tichelis, uh may have been uh, more valuable than gold than, uh, at times. <coughs> and after that, it comes down to um, what amounts to quality merchandise. Uh, good leather, good wood. Uh, olive oil that's very well refined um, and all of these things are going to be what is going to make the temple uh, you have a shall we say a pyramid of shall we say uh, Kedusha spreading out which is a theme in this Parsha starting with what that which is most precious which is the gold and silver and then eventually going to things that are just simply quality. Um, olive oil. Oh. Okay. Um, then the Chumash elaborates the different articles that will be in the, in the tabernacle, as well as the tabernacle itself, the building itself, or the tent, the structure. Pavilion is the best word. And um, <clears throat> it starts with the chest that is going to hold the, te the Ten Commandments, the, the stones, the two tablets on which they are carved. And it's a wooden chest that is gold-plated. The next item described is the cover to the chest, which is made out of solid gold. And on top of the chest, it has two um, cherubim, uh, angels, that are also from beaten gold, solid gold. And um, their wings are spread out, and they're above the um, 
the chest containing the Ten Commandments. And um, it says in the Chumash, God tells Moshe that from above the wings of the Cheruvim that he will speak to the Bnei Yisrael. That happens a number of times in Parshish Vayikra. Shem speaks to Moshe from uh, the Ohel Moed, the Tent of Meeting, as it's often called. Uh, the tabernacle, in fact, was a complex. We had a courtyard, and you had a building, you had an altar. And, and this, um, the uh, chest and the cheruvim are, in fact, the central article within the temple. Uh, the idea is that you have um, the concept of pr the most basic principles and pervasive principles in the Chumash, the Ten Commandments. And on top of that, you have literally God speaking to the Jewish people. Uh, in the middle is you have the angels, uh, which have various types of symbolism. Uh, the important aspect of the symbolism, most important, is the idea of metaphysics, that um, there is a spirit of kindness in this world, there is a spirit of justice in this world. Uh, so to speak, how God's word becomes um, manifest in this world, and how our actions and prayers are brought to God. The, the, that's the idea of the angels having wings, that they fly, they're messengers. The word malach in Hebrew also means messenger. Um, the wings also have another symbolism in that they are uh, and they're for protection. Uh, the wings of a bird are very strong and resilient, and they protect the body of the bird, which has the vital organs and is considerably more delicate. So the, there's the aspect of the wings fluttering above the, um, uh, the um, aron is an aspect of, so to speak, um, protection for the law. The, the, uh, the idea is that a person is sensitive about their basic principles. Um, the um, foundation in Kabbalistic um, uh, thought is um, corresponds to um, the the uh, lower section of the uh, torso, the crotch, which is obviously very sensitive. Uh, the idea of attachment, uh, procreation, are all part of this, of spreading out. Okay. Okay. You have other vessels also in the temple. Uh, you have a lamp, a menorah, symbolizing basically knowledge, uh, burning the midnight at oil. And uh, then you have a uh, table that has bread on it, uh, symbolizing a financial well-being, sustenance. There's a fourth item, which is the um, incense burner, the altar in which the incense is burnt. But that is not mentioned until um, the mitzvahs for the inauguration of the high priest priests are given. It's the least item to be discussed in the Chumash in regards to the construction of the Mishkan. Uh, the idea of the um, angel and the chest in the voice above the chest is so to speak that HaKadosh Baruch who doesn't have anything in this world except for um, Arba Amos Kalacha, for Amas, cubics, here, uh, the length of your arm, uh, of Halacha, oh, say six feet in any direction. That's, so to speak, 
where HaKadosh Baruch Hu is to be found. Uh, and the idea is that it's the word of God where um, God is most to be found. The, um, the Sephorno discusses it, and he says in regards to this, this is where you're getting into um, the whole idea of Ma'asei Merkava, that the Shekhinah, the divine presence, rests upon um, people who are studying the law, who are doing it sincerely, particularly the um, um, metaphysics, the connection between God and man, and God in this world. Um, that's the idea of the angels, which is the metaphysical world. Uh, the Kliyakarn uh, takes a uh, similar type of point of view where he says uh, that the angels represent the type of rabbi that a person should learn from, that he should resemble an angel of God, and he should be as clean from sin as a one-year-old child. The idea is that the, um, the uh, Keruvim were like babies. It was a baby's face that they had. Um, the basic idea, though, is of a um, learning Torah uh, ha- has a relationship to uh, a person's character, good character, as well as a peaceful environment, and the motivation um, should be selfless, a selfless uh, uh, search for truth, what is God's will. Okay. And at this point, we get to the um, idea of the incense altar. Uh, the idea of incense is it's a fragrance that you can that spreads out. You can smell it from a distance. In the um, more you burn incense, uh, the further the fragrance goes. Um, that they could smell the fragrance all over Jerusalem and even to cities that were really not so close. Um, there. Uh, the idea of expansion is within the the idea of the incense altar. Well, it's also the idea of a uh, repute, uh, so to speak. Um, a person has a good smell about them. Um, that the um, the repute of Hashem spreads out. So. From a material standpoint, we're starting with gold and silver, and then going to precious, expensive dyes, and then to quality merchandise. Um, it says that when God later on in the Chumash, that when God would um, teach the law, He would teach it first to Moshe, then Moshe would teach it to Aaron and his sons, and after that. Um, Aaron and his sons would teach it to um, all of Israel. Again, it's the idea of the word of God spreading out, starting with the um, the um, ones who are uh, wisest and the most righteous. It ultimately comes down to the prophecy in Yeshayahu, chapter 11, where it says that it's a prophecy of the messianic uh, messianic era, eleven five. It says that righteousness shall be the um, the the belt of of his waist, and faithfulness shall be the um, uh, the belt of his loins. Uh, the idea of a uh, protection for sensitive areas. It says, the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf 
and the young lion and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. And the cow and the beer shall feed together. Their young ones shall lay, lay down together. It's a, the idea of a um, world at peace. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox, a uh, predator. It says, and the suckling child shall play on the uh, hole of a cobra. And a weaned child shall put his hands in a viper's nest. Uh, such a change in nature that um, very vicious animals become very peaceful animals um, and are specifically um, symbiotic or kind to uh, what used to be their prey. It says, they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my my holy mountain. And then this is the basic point. He says, for the earth shall be full of knowledge of Hashem as the waters cover the sea.